Constitution. That's 2060, but apparently uh, it could be before that. The Department of Defense is quite concerned about it, mm -hmm. that uh, there are entire sections of the Defense Department that are working on that subject in particularly. The big question is, are we and it going to be on the same side of the sun at the same time? And some of our remote viewers have concluded that yes, it's going to happen this time. That we and it will be on the same side of the sun at the same time. And if the remote viewer, and they're getting their information from ETs, and much of my information from the same source. And yes, we're in for some bad times. And we're talking about while we're still here on the planet, because we I don't know that we'd be <clears throat> alive during 2016. Well, I don't know whether I'll still be here or not. You know, I'll be 80 in, in March, and, uh, you know, I've, I've got a ticket out of here. Right. I've got it okay. stamped. I've got it paid. But I'm, there's, there's... I'm nine years beyond my warranty as it is. No, but I think you're going to live quite a while. Um, <clears throat> so what, okay, so we've got this, this interesting thing going on, and we're getting, we have a huge crackdown on anything to do with Planet X. It's yes. been made the laughing stock. It's, it's an amazing thing. Really. Oh, the ridicule is... is it, I mean, I think it supersedes even the E.T. ridicule. Oh, it does. It you does. Know, I think it, it's been so strong, and it actually has come, I would say, from the Vatican. Mm-hmm. So what are they so afraid of, number one? And number two, have you heard the theory that basically what has to happen is a protective shield is going to be put around the Earth such that this time it's actually not going to have the impact that they <clears throat> it has in the past? I've heard that rumor in passing. And the technology exists to do that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what I have a suspicion is that much of what will transpire will be allowed to transpire. <clears throat> the earth is not going to be destroyed and the human race is not going to come to an end. But it is going to be a difficult period of time when it begins. And let me tell you, it has already begun. The reaction from the sun is, is, is a clear response to the presence of this other body. Now this other body has already been photographed by telescopes in southern Chile and in New Zealand. I had asked Marcia to dig into her files. I, 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 had a, I had an article from a good friend who publishes a magazine in Rome. And uh, Adriano, I don't know whether you know about Adriano For, Forgione, Brilliant young man. <clears throat> yes. Anyhow, he has connections with the Vatican. <clears throat> he has good friends who are Jesuit priests and astronomers. And the Vatican is concerned about it. Anyhow, Adriano sent me an article including two photographs that have been taken of Nibiru already. Taken by uh, primarily, I think, the, the observatory in Chile. But they've taken pictures at an observatory in New Zealand as well. So it's close enough now that optical telescopes have pictures of it. And they're studying it carefully to try to determine, what is it they call it, the celestial mechanics of how everything moves. Well, <clears throat> if our remote viewers are correct and the ETs have given us some rundown on it, it's going to be a difficult passing. Because we and it are going to be on the same side of the sun at the same time, and that means all hell's going to break loose. Now, they have the technology. We're talking about not only Anunnaki. There are intelligences out there that began a billion years ago, and they have technology that puts them in a category of what Kaku would call a Type 3 civilization. Mm -hmm. So that a type 3 civilization has the technology to ameliorate, mitigate the passing of Nibiru. Now, whether they do that, as you say, put a protective, protective shield around it, Nibiru has done that for itself. They have a protective shield around their planet. 
<clears throat> which was why in the photographs it comes out as kind of reddish gold. And apparently that's why they came here for the gold in the first place, because they were losing their atmosphere and they needed to seed gold particles in their atmosphere to keep the atmosphere from, you know, they go on a long trip out there. Okay, but the Anunnaki are here, you're saying, and yet the Anunnaki are supposedly on Nibiru as well, well or, or what, what are you thinking, or what are you, what's your sources telling you about this? The civilization, the Anunnaki civilization, is on the planet. But the Anunnaki are on this planet as well, all over the damn place, under the sea, in facilities that we know about, inside Mount Hayes in Alaska, inside Mount Perdido in the Pyrenees. Uh, there's one right in the middle of Australia, which is near, what, uh, Alice Springs. And what, what's the facility out there? Pine Gap. Pine Gap, yes, thank okay. you, my friend. Pine Gap, to, to and that happens to be the R and R facility, according to the remote viewers. The, what's R and R? I'm uh, sorry. Re rest and relaxation. <laughs> it's what we used to call it in the military when we. The R and R facility <coughs> for who? What the Anunnaki? For the ET really? and the Anunnaki. Yes. Pine Gap. And they're dealing with human beings. They need rest and relaxation. <laughs> <clears throat> a lot of my work has been a result of analyzing and sifting and evaluating the work of others. That's what an intelligence analyst does, takes data from a variety of sources. But I have some information that I have been provided from sources within the US, U.S. government that tell me that, yes, they are deeply concerned about it and they're worried sick about it and they don't know what to do about it because we don't have the power to do a damn thing about it. <clears throat> Is the estimated date as best you are given to understand by your sources in the next few years, rather than Sitchin's estimate of 2060? <clears throat> well, let me tell you something about, you're talking about 2012? I'm talking, well, there are some, <clears throat> kind of, there are some serious Planet X researchers who say that we'll see the thing next year, and the thing's going to start... I think you may see it next year, but I don't think you're going to have the hell breaking loose until maybe about 2020. You're going to have a, a build-up of factors. It's not going to happen all of a sudden, just like that. You're not going to go out the front door and all hell's breaking loose. You're going to see a, a series of events taking place involving our geologic structures. You're going to have increased volcanic, volcanic activity. You're going to have increased sunspot activity. We're at a low right now. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see tremendous sunspot activity. You're going to see tremendous geologic activity. The ring of fire will probably erupt. Now, these are all going to be clues that <clears throat> all hell is coming, you know. <clears throat> you're going to have storms. The, cy the cyclones have been getting worse, and the hurricanes have been getting worse. And <clears throat> you're going to having hurricanes showing up in places that they really haven't troubled us for a long, long time. So you're going to have a, a build-up, uh, <clears throat> not slowly, but it, a consistent build-up of geological and weather and sunspot activities. And you're probably going to... The estimate that I've heard from people who have studied it is about 2020. 